ESA? Yes, sir. Okay, and that stands for? Uh, I, I'm not sure. That's a good question. The M, I think, is mobile, and PESA uh, must be referenced to currency. Yeah, PESA is the Swahili word for money, and the M prefix in Swahili is for person. It literally means money man. Okay, well, being from Texas, I'm used to PESO. I'm just not used to PESA. I guess that makes sense. Um, how do you protect against fraud? Uh, you said it's secure and you said it's a good system, but you know these hackers and these internet uh, thieves are very, very capable and very, very you know uh, creative. How do you protect against that? Well, I, I, I just say the comparison is against shipping American food, and you know a, a truck filled with American food is a more vulnerable target and has been proven to be a more vulnerable target than an electronic transfer that goes through an M-PESA system or an alternative system like that. I guess that makes sense. And also, it's a bit more protective of the personnel involved. It's hard to get somebody shooting at you through the internet. Um, OK, well, good. Secretary Glickman, um, I represent the second largest rice producing district in Texas. And rice is a commodity often used in U.S. food aid programs. Now, these packets, and by the way, what was this second packet? Packet. And then this, what was this here? <laughs> there are actually three products. One is the supplementary food, which is the plumpy nut that I think is made in Rhode Island. One is the therapeutic version of it, which is a much denser, okay. you, more richer version of the same. Uh, gotcha. Basis. You said that. OK. This is a cracker that, <laughs> a cookie that <clears throat> is also enhanced. All right. Thank you. Um, last week, uh, Jamie Warshaw with USA Rice testified before my counterparts on the Agricultural Committee regarding the strong amount of good that comes with the bag of rice that reads from the American people. Now, if I understand correctly, you know, you just said that in your, you would believe that in 10 years, no more grain is being shipped over there. Um, Secretary Glickman, is, as Secretary of the Agriculture, uh, you were directly behind much of the international food aid contributions. You believe that that got us goodwill. So large bag of, of grain, rice, or whatever, is there a mix here? Do you think this gets us as much goodwill? What, what are you, what's your take on I think there's a mix. I don't think we're going to eliminate uh, uh, in-kind assistance forever, everywhere in the world. There's just too much stuff that's been in the politics lately. But there's well, too for, much stuff forgive, happening. Forgive the, the pun. There's too much you know, stuff that's and, been uh, ingrained. And bad, bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that ingrained. No, there's too, there's too many things happening with respect. You know, I was thinking about if the South Carolina uh, tragic flooding had happened, which is, has happened, and in Taiwan or in South Korea or in Central America. We just had this problem in Guatemala last week with massive floods. You know, we would be shipping some in-kind assistance. There's just no question about it. So, but, but it's a mix, and it requires flexibility. It requires judgment. And yeah, I think it probably helps the U.S. to have that physical commodity go there, but that's not the prime reason we ought to be doing it, because you also will get the similar benefit on the products that you're seeing there, because they will say uh, uh, product of, or help from the American people or USAID or wh whatever. So. OK, and then finally, uh, with the development of uh, uh, food aid programs targeting the most poor and chronically hungry communities and having impressive results shown by the USAID Commission Second Food Act and Food Security Assessment and important linkages with Feed the Future. We want to be careful not to lose such unique programs and tools that have become vital and effective within the range of our global food security strategy. So I know, you know, I know we have tremendous pressures to respond to significant humanitarian crises, but with development program waiver language in Section 300 of S. Senate Bill 525's Food Aid Reform Bill, we have have we have we reached the point where we need to allow the USA to waive those fragile developmental gains? of the Title II development programs to create those more emergency response programs? Do we need to change that? I, I, any of you? If I may, absolutely, Congressman Weber. It's important to keep in mind it, it costs about $125 for treating children's severe acute malnutrition with the sorts of products that Dr. Shah showed. 125 per? Per child life year saved. Uh, per year? That's a, that's a per year. So that's a relatively modest investment. 
You compare that against the cost of, of delivering grain from uh, purchased in the United States, we're talking something on the order of 11 or 12 children's lives per shipment, the, the, just the excess cost of shipments. And keep in mind that providing the Secretary of Agriculture and the AID Administrator with flexibility doesn't say U.S. agriculture won't participate. We are the most productive agricultural economy in the world. We are the world's largest agricultural exporter. The rice farmers in your district, sir, will continue to ship rice to these very places, providing, in many cases, the rice that will be bought locally, because they are the most efficient farmers in the world right now. The key thing is being able to buy the best quality product at the best price at the time it is most needed. And American agriculture and American food producers, manufacturers, millers, can play a very valuable role in that with no impediment whatsoever. And for just $125 per child life year, we will get a much better product for the productivity of American industry and agriculture. To me, it is a no-brainer, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.